Uh, hello there. Uh, I had to take some uh, precautions because of the corona crisis. Uh, they didn't want to sell me face masks. <laughs> so where are we? Uh, we are in... Oh, very. <laughs> Honey, please. <laughs> we are in Holderbank, which is a place in the Jura Mountains of Switzerland. Jura Mountains... Uh, the Jura Mountains are uh, best known for giving the Jurassic period uh, its name. And that's where we basically are here in geologic time. Holderbank used to be in the late Jurassic period, about 160-150 million years ago, uh, a shallow reef of, made up of sponges. And as you can see here, I can pick up literally every second rock and you see a fossil sponge. This, used to, this entire place used to be in the faultic zone, so shallower than 200 meters. And it used to be like covered in sponges, which were then overgrown by calcareous uh, algae. And this way it formed a reef with, in which many invertebrate animals live. You, you can find here uh, shark teeth, ammonites, belemnites, crinoids. All sorts of stuff. Like a couple of years ago they even found the single bone of a Ramphorinca pterosaur here. Like the one oh. you could find that so moving. Oh look, there's children coming. Sheet. Let's get out of here and make it. <laughs> no, they can dig with us. So, Please be careful. Oh, yeah. So honey, what have we found so far? A uh, whole oh. bunch of ammonites. And nice ones, right? And sponges and yeah, very nice ones. I'll show you later. I found most of them. <laughs> So honey, what, what kind of fossils can you find here, aside from ammonites and brachiopods? Sponges, sponges and sponges. And aside from sponges? More sponges. Oh! You can find uh, shark teeth, for example, uh, belemnites, crinoids, clams. And? On rare occasions, probably maybe reptiles. Wow. And other fish fossils. But those fossilized less often. Uh, wait, wait. Uh. Oh, wow. <gasps> what did you find? <laughs> what happened? Uh, it was an ammonite. I found again an ammonite. Oh, one. yes. Honey, you can show them later because there's no way. Huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Please be careful. <laughs> I lost the rock. The rock? I'm not. Well, I'm all the way up here for now. It looks, it is, it lo is a lot more steep than it looks. Hello, Miranda. Hello. Wait for the camera. What? Wait for the camera. Ah. <laughs> don't fall down. Why not? Because I don't want you to die. I have now reached the level where the rock stopped being a cobble and are now starting to become solid rock. What cobble? No, uh, what's the English word for keys? I don't know anymore. Ah. Honey, I think I'm about to die. Don't tell me what to do. A piece of sponge. I, I don't think you can see the pores well in this lighting, but yeah, this used to be a piece of the sponge long. Did you say something, honey? I found a piece of coral. Oh, nice. Yeah, should I come ba back? Uh, can you start? 
I want to find the shark too for you first. Too bad. Want some nice things here. A brachio pot. Another one for the bucket. Monkey right again. <laughs> My best general British impression. Yak <laughs> I'm back from, from Kazakhstan. So here are all the fossils we found on our trip. I tried my best to sort them by uh, taxonomy. So everything on this side is a sponge. If we picked up every sponge we found there, it would uh, like take up the entire table. Because every second rock in Holder Bank is made of sponge. Because it was an ancient sponge forest. It was like a big SpongeBob orgy. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like the most porous is he. Oh, wait. Is this one? Oh, Uh, these were, uh, were like very obviously not uh, sponges. This is, uh, but these were like just like surfaces of larger sponges. Here we actually have a three-dimensional one. <gasps> it's still intact. Oh, honey. And they're, fle they're, they're flexible. And look, this one that looks like fossilized ginger was like an entire three-dimensional sponge. Boy! <laughs> they're, they're already dead. So. When we were digging them out, you were like, oh, be careful, they are fragile. Hypocrite. Because I like sponges. Yeah. Hypocrite. You dropped them from like 15 meters, I dropped them from 2 centimeters. That's not true, honey. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is old sponge. Sponge. I think I talked uh, enough about sponges. Like, these are all ammonites here. Like one of the nice ones is like this like imprint of the interior of an ammonite shell. And the largest like uh, fair almost complete uh, ammonite is this one. If, uh... Wow. Right? Very nice. Yeah, in case you do not know what ammonites were, they were cephalopods, so distantly related to today's uh, squids, octopuses, cuttlefish. But they, most people compare them to, instead to the modern Nautilus, which still lives in the Pacific. So you have to imagine this organism, like this is the shell, and in like, the frontmost chamber of the shell, like in the interior is like chambered up, like, yeah. And like the only and the, the living body was only like in the in the frontmost chamber, so and the rest of the soft body would have uh, stuck out here. Like at this point, there would have been the eyes. Here would have been the beak. Well, the ammonites didn't technically have a beak. They had something similar called an optichus, and out of here would have grown the tentacles with which they sifted food. And like. There is like some debate over whether the ammonites looked more like nautilus or cuttlefish and similar cephalopods. And some argue they would look more similar to squids because they were more closely related to those kinds of cephalopods than to nautiluses. Nautilus, I am not Naughty. The, the, not the nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> like, the ones I really like are like the small ones. Can you? Hold on. Yeah. The smaller ones are that we found were like really really nice, and we found as and we found a special uh, spiky species. 
which I don't know the name of, but I am familiar with them because I once had to illustrate them for a course I had. And I put the, the spiky ones, uh, the spicy ones, the spiky spicy. Damn it, I can't find them anymore. Uh, Maybe you put them with the shelves. Impossible! I never make mistakes like this! Human! Doubt it. Ah, I found it, I found it. So this species is interesting because it has, maybe, I hope you can see it, but it has like little uh, like spikes growing out of the back of the shell. And you don't see it in this fossil, unfortunately, but in the males of this species, they would have also been like on this side and this side, uh, little um, wings, like wing folds growing out of the shell, which would have been like protected, which may have protected the eyes. But because they, we only find those in the male uh, um, individuals of this species, it was probably more. Uh, a sexual characteristic, you know, like the antlers of deer. So those were the ammonites we found. Here are all the brachiopods we found. Uh, like we already talked a lot about uh, brachiopods in the previous video I made. Did we? Yeah, yeah, when, the one when we were at Frick. Yeah, yeah. Where I made an entire monologue about uh, why brachiopods are nice and I still think they are nice because they are cute. They are very cute. What we are here, what I found here are belemnites. Now belemnites were also cephalopods like ammonites. Honey, but don't move your hand so much, so sorry, because sorry. it's like it's a... Yes. Yes. Were also cephalopods like like ammonites, but they were a lot more closely related to um, squids. And what you see here is uh, the interior shell they have. You know, like many squids have like this long body, like long torpedo shaped body. And what Belenites had a similar shape, but on the inside they also had a shell right under the skin, like an endoskeleton almost, which was filled with air and which helped them in with their buoyancy. And the nicest one I found here was like this uh, cap. Oh, wait. Like, let me zoom in. Yeah. This, yeah. this tip of a belemnite shell. And what is funny, what we see here uh, up there is, is how much it looks like a pistol bullet. And like in the early modern age, when people start being interested in fossils, you know, they. At the same time, they powder and guns and stuff and so when they found these in rocks they came up with like elaborate theories that these are like bullets that were um, produced in some ancient battles by people who had already invented guns like, I think John Milton was inspired by this and uh, like conjured up the idea that uh, the devil when he rebelled against heaven invented guns and cannons before the earth was even created. Very great. Now what we look at. So like this is quite a, a small example and this I am not sure but it could also be uh, the pointy bit of a Valenite shell but it would be a lot larger a, a lot larger squid than. However I am not sure if it's a Valenite because the interior looks a lot more um, like calcite. So it would instead be like the calyx of a sea lily, of which we have found um, remains here. They are very small and these are mostly the stalks of sea lilies. The entire animal would have also consisted of uh, like a bell-shaped body and tentacles and stuff. Basically like imagine a, an inverted starfish that grow that grew out of a stalk like a plant. I think we, in the previous video we already talked a lot about uh, primates. Okay. And what we have here are a lot of nice uh, fossil seashells. I am not sure if these are 
also brachio pots like these ones or if these are genuine clams uh, bivalves by that that's what i mean How about you explain the difference between them because... I did that in the previous video, but yes! Oh, sorry! Yeah, like, clams are close relatives of cephalopods and uh, snails and they consist of a right shell and a left shell Well, from your point of view, the view like this, right? Anyway, they consist of a right and a left shell with the body in between and they lie either on the left or the right side and open like this, you know? Meanwhile, brachiopods are actually symmetrical in that they consist of an upper and a lower shell with the mouth being somewhere in the middle. In clams, the mouth would be somewhere here. Like on the, on the side, what we would think is the side of the body. Because they have this weird symmetry. But brachiopods have, uh, are bilaterally symmetrical like we humans are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's the that's the anatomical difference and also brachiopods are more are not very closely related to mollusks, more, more to um bryozoans. In German they are called Mooskirchen, which means a uh, moss animal. Yeah. No not starfish, no. No star no no no, they have not it was once thought they were deuterostomes, so they would have been in the same group of animals as uh, echinoderms and as, as vertebrates. Oh. But I think newer genetic studies found them to be the um, protostomes, so they would be more closer to insects and uh, mollusks and stuff and worms. So, and one interesting find we, we did here is this, which. I suspect this from an echinoderm again, either from a sea lily or from a sea urchin. I know that um, sea urchins lived at Holder Bank, so this is my, my suspicion that it is one and that out of these nipples uh, one screw the, the spikes that we know from sea urchins. It does look like that. Yeah, yeah what we. But I hoped to. F I, I did uh, meet a personal goal of mine today, which is the, to find the uh, complete or at least the cap of a Bellamite shell. But I could unfortunately not find was shark teeth, or even a dinosaur or a pterosaur or marine raptor. That would that would have been nice. But those uh, fossilized less often because those animals were simply rarer than the ones we found here because they were on top of the food chain. Yeah. Honey, she's waiting for you to. Yes, I know. Her... <gasps> she's gone. Bonnie, chonky, 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 chonka hontas. Okay, I'll call her Miranda then. <laughs> 